Hello people and welcome to another video of Programmer's Corner. In this video we'll talk about the implementation of Robin Karp algorithm. So the Robin Karp algorithm finds the existence of a pattern in a given input using hash functions. Here we have declared an input string which is about 18 characters long and we are given a pattern in the form of an array. So these are the patterns that we have to find in the string. And we are not just going to find one pattern, but we are going to find all the occurrences of the pattern that comes in the string and we are going to return the first index of that occurrence. So how we do it? We declare a for loop which we have an array list which takes in the first occurrence of the pattern and we send the input as well as the selected pattern into a Robin Cup method. The method takes in two parameters, both in the form of strings. So initially what it does is it obtains a hash of the pattern. And how it does it? It takes each and every character of the pattern and it multiplies with prime to the power the pattern's alphabet's location times the ASCII code of the alphabet. So it takes the first letter that is D. So it goes from right to left. It doesn't go from left to right. As you see, it's the pattern length minus I minus 1. So it goes from right to left. So it takes the ASCII code of D. In this case, I'm passing CD as the pattern. So it takes the ASCII code of D and it multiplies it with the prime with the power and how we get the power the power is the prime raised to position of the element d in this case it's going to be zero because as i said we are starting from right and we are ending up in left like we do with numbers zero place the, the units place the tens place the hundreds place and so on and so forth so we have 17 to the power zero which is one so this is going to be the same thing then we add it with the next character that is C. So we take the ASCII of C times 17 to the power 1 and we add to the existing hash. And since there is no there are no more letters in this pattern, that becomes our hash and we return that hash. Now once we get the hash, we compare this hash with the hash of the substring of the input which is of the same size as our pattern so we begin from 0 to the length of and we go up till to the length of the pattern size or the input size minus the length of the pattern size which is like how many short of the actual thing rather than going off bound so we begin with a and b so we take the substring to compare so if we, we now have to compare the hashes so we take the substring that goes from i to the length of the pattern in this case it's 2 so it's going to be until a is only going to only going to take a and b and we send it into the compare hash function so let's see what the compare hash function does so the compare hash function first takes in the input takes in the input and turns it into a hash is the same method is the same method that i've used that i've used for the pattern so we get the input hash and then it checks that if the input hash is the same as that of the pattern hash if it's the same i know that i can say that they both are the same i can assume that they both are the same now i have to compare whether they're really the same so if they're the same it returns true and then i go down here and i then check if the two the substring that i've selected and the pattern are the same strings if they are then it gets added to the input which is an array list if they are not we move on to the next sequence of characters so it takes a b then b c then c d and so on and so forth this happens and then at the end of this once we go through the entire input stream on a given pattern it returns the output in the form of array list and it prints the pattern array list in a form of a string and it goes to the next pattern.
and it checks that if that pattern exists in those string. So let's see and let's run and see what's the result of this. So we have the first pattern is CD. So its allocation, its occurrence is at index two. So zero one and C. So CD is here. There is no, there are no other CDs in there. Then we have AB. Its occurrence is at index zero. That's AB. Then we have only A, which is located at four possible four places. That's index zero, at index six, at index ten, and at index seventeen. Then we have the pattern F. Where is that located? We have at index nine. Then we have at index thirteen. We have pattern C, which is located at index two. It's located at index five, and then it's located at index eleven. The same thing goes with BC. So BC is located at this and this index. So let's see what happens if we enter a pattern that's not in the so R, which is not inside the string. So it's going to return an empty list, saying that there is no, not the pattern was not found. So this is the algorithm for Robin Karp. The compl time complexity of this function is O of k. The time complexity of this function is O of n minus k because we don't go till the end. And the time complexity of this function is O of n because again you're comparing two strings even though they are numbers they are still strings and the comparison of two strings in the worst case scenario is O of n. The best case uh, the optimal is O of 1 but in this case it's O of n. A bit integer which I have used treat these objects as strings. So like I've, you can see here these. So I use bit integer for a reason. The, one of the reason was that what if the pattern is too long and it doesn't fit into the given space of an integer. In this case, the best possible way is to use an inbuilt API called Big Integer, which allows you to enter as big as a number you can. So it's not going to affect the performance of the, or it's, we're not going to run out of numbers to if, if the pattern is really, really long. So this is the algorithm for Robin Karp. If you like the video, please comment, share, and subscribe. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to do the same thing how to find different patterns using deterministic finite automatons. Thank you for watching.